Hi guys, welcome to Suero, Con Suero TV. I am Laura Pagpata, your usual host. Um, guys, so we're switching it up a bit. If you have been looking at the previous episodes um, on Suero TV, if you haven't checked out Suero TV, we are on our YouTube channel. Um, it's called Suero TV. Follow it, subscribe it. The previous episodes, we were actually covering them to give you support during COVID-19 lockdown and just um, the crisis in general, that it, how it will affect you, your personal finances, how you can cover yourself, your savings and your investments. I've been interviewing different exper experts in those areas as well as um, your rental. How can you, as a property investor, how, how can you be covered, right? We also talked about as an entrepreneur, what can you do, what to, what to look out for. The interviews are going to continue. There's a lot to cover in this particular area. So they are going to continue. But today, uh, we're going to be talking about business finances. How to manage business finances as a non-accountant, okay? Um, or as a business leader and you're not an accountant. What to look out for, okay? Um just to remind you a bit, or for those that do not know, we I am an accountant by profession at Suero. We do help small businesses with accounting solutions as well as business advisory for you to run a profitable business. All right, so we just help you to set up systems to ensure that you're running profitably, basically. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to be talking about um, how to manage your business finances as a non as, as a non accountant. The very first thing that I would advise you to do, if you do not have an accountant and you are running a business and you want to be profitable, I would advise that you hire one. We do that for you, but not as a, an internal. You don't pay a salary. You just pay us a fee and we will do everything for you at a, at a, at a, at a cost that is reasonable for that particular business. It always depends on the load of work. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about business finances as a non-accountant. As a business leader, what do you need to look out for when you need to be managing the business um, accounts? All right. The very first thing that I would like to advise you is you need to understand your finances as a business leader. What does understanding of your finances mean? It means whatever money that you are making, you need to understand where it's going, where it's coming from. First, where it's coming from and where it's going. Okay. This includes every single stage of what's happening with your money. All right. <clears throat> Very first thing, when you actually um, receive your money from a customer, you should have invoiced that customer. All right. Let's say you have a, uh, um, there's a potential. I want you to take you through a step of actually end up invoicing a customer and then the customer pays you. All right. The very first step is you should have a bank account for your business. Very important. Separate yourself from the business. There's a bank account for the business and you need to make sure that money goes into the bank account for the business. This is how many clients will also take you seriously and that's how you will also be able to manage and actually see how much money you are making as a business. Okay? Have a separate account, number one. Number two, take the, the, the process through now you've just um, clinched a, a client. What is the first thing that you should do? Quote that client. The client would want, how much are you charging? Right? Yeah. I will be charging, I don't know, 5,000 bula for my services. What are, what do your services entail? It's very important. What do your services entail if you're going to charge us 5,000 bula? If you can not detail it on the quote, at least support with a supporting document and actually write, this is what the quote entails. All right. This is what I'm charging for and this is what I'm going to do for you and this is what I'm going to do for you at 5,000 bula. Right? This is a coat okay once they come back to you with the coat and they say okay we're ready to do business what are your terms of payment on the coat as well you should have written what your terms of payment are for us to start business we require 50 or 60 percent deposit all right and your reasons basically is that you know they are showing commitment to payment so it's important for most small businesses try and insist on 50 percent deposit so that you are basically securing and also you're securing that the client is serious about securing you for the job all right 
There are businesses, however, that don't necessarily require a 50% um, 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 deposit. You'll find that some businesses are quite, um, maybe you've worked with this particular business before or they're reputable, you know that they will pay you. So then you don't necessarily need to require a 50% deposit. Also, a 50% deposit is also based on and the fact that maybe you actually need the 50% deposit to start the work. So just be very open and very transparent with your clients that I will, however, I will require 50% deposit for me to deliver because of this and this and this and this reasons. Okay. These are for particularly for clients that you've worked with before, for clients that yeah, you are trusting that they will pay um, everything, um, you know, or they will pay whether you know, they've always paid you whether you, you ask for 50% deposit or not, but this time you need it, so you need to explain to them why, okay? The next step now, they need you to invoice them, all right? Now, invoice the client, all right? When you start the work, you invoice the client. Once you've invoiced the client, the client will either pay the 50% deposit or they will pay at the end of the project. Nonetheless, you've invoiced them, all right? In terms of payments, make sure that you communicate how you get paid. All right, I don't know why my earrings keep falling, but anyway, uh, make sure that you communicate how you get paid. All right, um, in terms of like, for instance, you would prefer to get paid after 30 days or after 60 days or even after two weeks. It's very important that you communicate that even on the invoice and code. All right, so then you then invoice your customer with baking details on your invoice it's very very important now with your invoices as well make sure that your invoices have invoice numbers how is the invoice structured it has your logo it has the date of the invoice it also has an invoice number okay and it also has what services you're providing um at what costs and at, if there's VAT that you are charging, then you include the VAT in it. All right. So that's basically what should be on the invoice and the terms of payments, etc. All right. You've invoiced the client, then the client pays you. Now, once the money has gotten into the account, all right, those that's the where now you start checking. Now, what am I going to be doing with that money? Is the money going towards what I'm actually doing? Um, is it buying products for me to deliver? What does it actually do? The money has to do exactly what it's supposed to be doing, benefiting the business. Okay, it's very, very, very important. If you've got salaries that you have to be paying, um, if you've got salaries that you've got, you've got to be paying, ensure that salaries are also paid. Um, if you've got a salary that you need to pay yourself, make sure you pay yourself a salary as well. Make sure those are the things that you actually fix in place that you are paying salaries. And these are how much your salaries are, how much is your salary as well. And they need to be as consistent as possible. And please always remember that um, the one thing about... Um, paying yourself is that you are always the last person to be paid if you have employees all right so those are just the basic management of, pers uh, of of business finances that i will just talk about for today invoicing a customer quoting a customer where do you start and how do you do it all right that is all for today for this episode the next episodes we're going to be talking about more about managing your business finances that's it for now guys i wish you all the best just you know, hit me on inbox, comment, tell me what more you want me to talk about. But we'll be talking about a lot about managing your business finances when you're running a business for a non-accountant. Remember, this is going to be as basic as possible. If you need an accountant to do your, biz your, your, your business finances professionally, this is what we're here for. Give us a shout or hire an accountant internally to do that for you. All right. Thank you and bye for now.